there's like a maintenance of cognitive dissonance that as long as we're doing something, we can sort of ignore the fact that the ship is actually leaking out of all the holes we're not patching. Exactly. Well, and again, and, and also it's like, I think what agility is exposing in many respects is that uh, the fundamental design of our ships is no longer adequate mm -hmm. to be able to tackle the problems that we need to tackle. You know, like the classic, one of the classic examples you and I have gone into many times with leaders and we've talked about, and I still want to write about more is uh, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a meme at this point for leaders at tech companies to say like, I want my people to be more independent. I want a more autonomous organization. And it's like, well, if you want a more autonomous organization, it's a very noble thing to desire, but like that can't, you can't just do that because it's trendy for one. And, and, and you also can't expect that without redesigning your ship, like, like redesigning the way that your organization interoperates that you're gonna be able to achieve that. Because if you have a very command and control hierarchical information flow structure at your organization, that's going to work against any effort you put in place to create autonomy, period. Right. This, so that, th this, this is the kind of stuff that I, I feel like people don't understand. It's, like, it's not, adopting agility is not, let's do these five new processes. Let's set up a safe release train pipeline like it's not it's not about that it's it's actually changing how you see the world what the the role of leaders are and and the fundamental some fundamental elements of your culture that will then unlock the ability for you to adopt new processes